the meeting to order. Uh, this is the Montpelier Planning Commission for August 26th. Uh, for our agenda, the first thing we have to do is approve the agenda. Everyone in favor? Yep. <coughs> I have to move that. I forget. No. We'll say we'll say it's fine. Okay. <laughs> deemed deemed approved. Uh, it's comments from the chair. Is uh, the next item. First off, congratulations, Marcella, our newest member. So you definitely earned your spot by getting yourself caught up before joining. Um, so welcome aboard. We're definitely happy to have you and also have a seventh seat so to make quorums easier. Can we hear something about I your think that's, background? That's and great. That's a great idea. Sure. Introduce yourself. Sure. <laughs> we can great. introduce ourselves. Two. That yeah. might be so, helpful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. My name is Marcella Dent. I'm, um, I've been in Montpelier for two and a half years now and in Vermont for about five. And I'm from Anchorage, Alaska originally. And I moved here for grad school, and I'm a, I'm a master's student at UVM in the Natural Resources um, program. And I work for the Agency of Natural Resources. I work, I, base, I support the lawyers and the planners in the central office, so I worked for Leslie, uh, which is how I connected with this. And um, yeah, I'm, I, this, I'm, I have a lot to learn, and I'm really excited but, uh, to, to learn it all and <laughs> to learn from you, but um, this seems like a good, seems like a great opportunity for me to um, apply some of the things that I've been learning in my master's program and then also through working at ANR um, for Montpelier, so, yeah. Great. So, yeah, what's, we your, can go what's your master's in? Um, it's a Master of Natural Resources. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm set, my focus is, I sort of tried to get a focus of um, public administration and natural resources, like I, those are the two parallel tracks of classes that I took. And, yeah, thesis study is about collaborative natural resources at a really large scale, landscape scale. Is everybody comfortable? So I'm going to turn that off, otherwise. Oh. Just because of the noise. It's so okay with me. Is that cool? Yeah. Are we, hmm? Can we? I mean, the one in the other room is handling the server. But Maybe. Maybe we turn that off. It just seems loud, that's all. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine yeah, if I'm going to turn it off. Turn it off and let me see how it goes. We'll have to remember to turn it back on. That's better. Okay. That is better. <coughs> Peace and quiet. So, yeah, we can go around the table. Uh, yeah. Ariane, we're going to start. I'm Ariane Kassam, and I've um, been on the Planning Commission for maybe almost a year and a half, but I still feel like I'm learning a lot. And I work at the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board. Uh, so I'm Kirby Keaton. I've been on the Planning Commission for three years. It's, uh, yeah, time's flying. Um, and uh, I work at the Department of Taxes as a policy attorney. I'm Barbara Connery. I'm an architect and I practiced in Montpelier for about 30 years and then I taught at Vermont Tech. So I was in the sustainability program. And I've been on the Planning Commission for six years, something, five or six. Um, seems like a long time. <laughs> Hi, I'm Aaron Kosicki. Uh, I've been on the Planning Committee for Commission for about a year. Uh, right now, I'm a lawyer for the Secretary of State's office. And I'm Emery Richardson, and I've been on the Planning Commission for nine months, and I'm going into eighth grade in three days. That's excellent. <laughs> 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 That's great. Uh, so for the nameplate, Mike will get you one. It'll probably be a meeting or two before that happens. Yeah, no problem. Would it be helpful if I wrote my name down on a piece of paper and stuck it? And you in don't. Front you don't need to. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> She's Marcella, everyone. And, <laughs> and did he get you a binder with uh, the ordinance? Not yet, but since he's on vacation, I'm sure that that, that was just. Yeah. It was just yeah, last week, so. Yeah, he'll get you all the on board and stuff. Okay. So great. that's great. Yeah, this ordinance is a real page turner, so. Yeah, oh, yeah, I can't yeah. wait. <laughs> but it's better to have it in hard copy. Exactly. Exactly. To it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So Marcella reported uh, earlier to me, and I thought I would share it with everyone. Um, 
that it seems that the city council uh, looked at the bathhouse slash hydrotherapy facility issue and seems inclined to do as the landowners are asking and to change the zoning boundary, but that hasn't been done officially yet. It'll be done the next time they're approving some suggestions for coming from us. Because um, I think some of them are on their way through Mike on the way to city council to do that. Um, so, so what's coming to us? Hmm? What's coming? It's not coming to us, but you remember the, the issue we looked at last time and we right. decided not to act on it. Yep. And it went to city council this last week. Yep. Uh, it seems like they are inclined to make that boundary oh, change. I thought it was going to be in there. They were sending something back. I, mean, it's, it's, I think it's the uh, my, underst uh, my understanding is that, that we we did some um, zoning update stuff it's a couple has, months ago. It still hasn't gone to them. I guess not. Yeah. Okay. So when it when that gets to them, they'll oh, make so, they'll right. make this change. Make it seems like. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, I guess the stuff could happen though. So I guess it's not set sure. stone, but I guess we should expect that that boundary change is going to happen. Sure. Uh, that's that's it for me. So we can go into general business, and we have no members of the public here. So it seems like there's no comments from the public tonight. Uh, and then the next thing is to review the minutes from our last meeting. So everyone can take a look. selling that parcel <clears throat> no she's not from VCFA right. so I mean we could just say Kate uh, representing the, the prospective owner yeah. or buyer and developer. Is that, yeah I was actually confused by that I thought that she did say she was representing VCFA no no no, no. she said okay. she was representing the represent the, the group that is thinking about developing okay that makes sense that they would send a representative instead of VCFA right so we want to amend that to say from the prospective buyer. It's a, de it's a de developer. All right, that's fine. Or on the second paragraph should just be changed as well. It's not the VCF18. The development team, developer team. Development team. Yeah. We could say that the BCFA is identifying the parcel, but they are not actually right. developing. So, what's what's their motion? Oh, to amend under the paragraph <coughs> item one, two, three, four, five, six under six, where it says here proposal from Kate Stevenson. Um, she's identified in the second sentence. Kate from BCFA, we should change that to say Kate from the prospective developer from, um, and then in the next uh, paragraph where it says the BCA, BCFA team, it should say the BCFA development team. Or maybe just the development team, because BCFA is just selling the parcel. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's you just said that to identify the parcel, but I think oh, that's oh. identifiable enough before. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so to delete VCFA there and replace it with development. Right, yeah. and to delete VCFA from the previous paragraph. Okay. The motion. Do we have a second? Oh. Well, I would move that we approve the agenda with uh, Barb's amendment. Or, I'm sorry, approve the minutes with Barb's edits. Amendment. Second okay. <coughs> All in favor of the motion? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. So the agenda is approved with, or the uh, the minutes rather are approved oh. with right. that change. Sure. Moving on on the agenda. I feel like this sense a strong term for it. I just showed it now. But then yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> So we have the recommendation to the City Council for the appointment of a uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission Board of Directors uh, representative. Um, 
this is to take my place um, so that I'm freed up to focus more on chair duties. Uh, the next meeting uh, will be the second Tuesday of September there, so um, it's coming up now. Uh, previously, Stephanie Smith had mentioned some interest. Uh, I don't know if, Marcel, if this is something you'd be interested in, uh, but throw that out there for you to think about. Okay. Uh, um, I don't know if you've heard a description of what uh, this, uh, okay. So what it means to be the representative is that you go and vote for Montpelier uh, with the Regional Planning Commission. So you would be a, a voting member of the Regional Planning Commission. Uh, and you would have an opportunity if you wanted to, if you had the time, to serve on one of the subcommittees uh, for the Regional Planning Commission. The Regional Planning Commission's uh, tasked with a lot of things under state law. It's mostly... There's no way I'm going to be able to describe this in a way in which they would approve it. <laughs> but from my perspective, they approve town plans from other municipalities in the county, basically. It's, it's more or less the, this county, uh, central Vermont. Um, and uh, they, they approve energy plans and other things. Uh, you know, when, when we go to make our town plan, we're going, to, we're going to have to put it before the Regional Planning Commission. There's a regional plan itself. Uh, which you know incorporates all the municipalities in central Vermont, and so they want to make sure that our plans do not conflict with their plans. Um, but as a representative, Montpelier has a say in what the regional plan is. Uh, you know, the only Montpelier specific thing really happening is we're working on our own city plan, which is going to which is going to go through the process there too. I mean, but of course you wouldn't be alone in, in that, or any the representative wouldn't have a lot to do with that. It'd be Mike and all of us um, in that process. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the only other thing is um, we are currently developing out toward Berry Street, and a lot of the stuff that's happening in Montpelier is going there out that way. And the region and the regional plan currently doesn't have Montpelier developing out there, so that's sort of a just an issue that's that's out there right now. Other than that, it's uh, the meetings every f second Tuesday um, of the month mostly involve a presentation from someone for about an hour, um, someone from the state usually, um, either about economic development or energy or some other planning. So you just learn about random stuff and you get to participate in some of the kind of uh, county-wide planning that's going on. Okay. Um, so that's something you can think about. We know Stephanie could also be thinking about it. And so I think with that, we can just push this item off and figure it out next time. Is the, does the, re the person that we're recommending need to be from this group? Or it needs to be one of us? I don't. I don't think that. I don't think it's a requirement. No, but I would think that we would want that because okay. we want to re yeah, that's report been, back. That's been kind of the tradition, <laughs> so that we have a link between regional planning commission and this commission. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, and, and it's really we're quite a bit different than the other towns that are represented in the region. Yeah. So they tend to be smaller towns and villages and things. So it, I think it's good for us to mm -hmm. have an active voice at, from the planning commission. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I mean, you know, everyone's going to have their own take. My take is that, yeah, the Regional Planning Commission is actually, it provides a lot of services too. And Montpelier has more resources and we kind of have our, our own services. So we don't use the Regional Planning Commission that way. Um, so I'm just kind of, so, so a lot of my attitude there is a lot of this is for the other municipalities. So I'm just kind of there to like observe. Mm -hmm. um, you're really selling this one, Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> What's it? Sell low and yeah, yeah. deliver like, high or like, something like that? I really just sit there and learn things. It's like, it's like free school. Yeah. <laughs> it really is, yeah. A lot, a lot of it is just the presentations. Um, Public Service Department recently put on a really good one. Do you know Anne? Anne Margolis? Yeah, yeah, she's great. Yeah, yeah, she's great. <laughs> Um, okay, so we'll we'll put that off uh, for next time, and hopefully vote and figure it out. Uh, our next meeting is it will be the night before the next regional planning commission meeting. 
which so if we do get an appointment then then um, maybe we could do something like that person won't be official because they, you know, they have to be approved through the city council mm. uh, so I'll still I'll still go to the, that meeting but maybe the other person could the new person could just attend with me or something to uh, just to, to meet the staff and the regional plan so here's something I sell on it. The Regional Planning Commission staff are really, really great, really competent, and it's a lot of planners, and they have a lot of information and knowledge. And, and Bonnie, who's the director, is, is really, really great at navigating politics and also being just really um, uh, competent at planning. So, okay, so we'll move on to the, to the main thing for tonight, which uh, it's up to us how long we want to spend here. Well, we could definitely potentially get out earlier and that's to discuss the boundary for the design review district and as a reminder this will be we we have an idea of what we think the regulations are going to say we're still going to get another shot at those when they come back from the historic preservation committee uh, but but we need to decide what we think the, the boundary will be the district boundary will be there will be public uh, input on this so this is basically what we're deciding tonight what our starting point is going to be and with that, we have the maps that uh, Mike left for us. And we have one, uh, we have one map, the one on the left, uh, has uh, the zoning districts in the various colors. Uh, those are the different neighborhoods under our zoning. Um, we have design control, which is the black barrier kind of boundary around the outside uh, throughout the downtown area you see there. And then the one on the left has the National Historic uh, District, which is in a red boundary, which is slightly larger, but not completely overlapping the black. Uh, it's harder to see from here. It is hard to see, and we can get up and go over there. And then on the on the right here, we have uh, we also have zoning on that map, and we have but we have the and we have the current design control district, which is the dark black, which is the same as the other map. But the, the different thing is that instead of the uh, National Register on the right map, we have the designated downtown, which is, it's, it's filled in, uh, which is really hard to see from here. But uh, as a reminder from last time, the smallest we can get really is the designated downtown. Um, and then we have the current design control and National Register as all possibilities as things that we want to take as templates. Could also create something new. There's the argument. There's an argument for making it line up with the zoning neighborhoods. That's why that's on the maps. Um, and there's also, you know, the question of where we start with is going to uh, determine how the public responds. And so, if we start small, then the public may not acknowledge it very much we may not get as much feedback because a lot of people will see that their uh, you know residence is left out of the designated downtown for instance so I don't know but we, if we start small we can't get larger later that would be difficult just to sell yeah I mean I, I feel that way I feel like it would be it would be hard to grow it I mean we could get feedback where people say they want to be included but I don't think that's really likely. So really what we're doing, focusing on, is the extent of the design control district and just determining what criteria we want to use. Whether it matches the register district, mm -hmm. matches zoning neighborhoods, or matches designated downtown. Okay, I'd like to just... Yeah, yeah, let's... Yeah, Let's look a bit closer. I mean, there's, there's, I've noticed, I mean, there's quirky things. There's, you know, you have, you have the, the College of Fine Arts is currently under design control, but it's off on an island of design control. Is that something we want to keep? Yes, this, this must be naturalized parcel, yes. which is why it's so Did I, yes, about a question about that. Did I understand from last time correctly that these, this was included in design control not because they're historic buildings, but because they're the first thing you see when you come into town? 
I think so, but at the same time, a lot of those are state buildings that are not going to have to comply. Yeah, I'm surprised that those show up, actually, um, within our design control district. Shouldn't those be blanked out along with the stables? Well, not all of these, right? Like the high school? No, that's right, but the state house is, is also not excluded. So any of those civic or uh, governmental properties, we really can't include anyway. Right. They're, I mean, it's okay if they're in the boundary, but they're, but we, you just got to know that there's going to be, they're going to be exempt. Well, you know, and the other thing that would be useful to have is the extent of the um, capital complex, because it's not just the state house, it's a whole capital complex that we don't have mm -hmm. jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, that runs the state. Yeah, it runs between Taylor Street um, to uh, Governor Davis. To Governor Davis, and then um, what's the the street that's uh, Terrace Street? Yeah. And, and then all the way to the water. Aaron, yeah. you grab, there's a fat marker on the table. Oh, there's Sharpies over here. I'll get a bucket of Yeah. Yeah, so it takes. So even so, this is just the designated cap. Yeah, no, but the cap, oh, I see. Okay, so thanks. Oh, no, sorry. It's it's so it's here. Start design mm -hmm. district. And here. Is it include Baldwin Street? Uh, yeah, it does. Um, and the, both sides of Baldwin Street? Yeah, it, it runs all the way to the southern edge of Terrace Street. There's there's some non-government oh, buildings, Vander though. Terrace. In there. Yeah, right, yeah. sorry. OK. There's, there's some non-government buildings around Baldwin. I think there's they would be subject. There's like yeah. two. <laughs> yeah, they're residential The NRC is one of them. Yeah. And then the, the house is for sale up there right now. There are residential buildings up there too. All right, so, but then also we have, which is not designated. Which of these buildings? Which well, this is, is labor. This is labor. This is labor. I think it's the screen. Yeah. I think these might be seen. Yeah. Oh. I know. One, one thought I had is the, the area beyond Bailey doesn't seem later, all that appropriate all. for this, but it's part of our designated downtown, so. so this part. That's something to keep in mind. So technically, we don't have any jurisdiction. Like this right here. Over that. That's in our designated downtown. That, uh, that's going to have to stay in. That's yeah, designated downtown, but it's not capital complex. Right, so this is basically we're just saying that that's the capital complex, the excluded portion. Yeah. And, and oh, so this, this dotted line. Yeah, sorry, that okay. line, which unfortunately okay. looks a lot like the I see. Okay. Yeah, no. um, but it, does it actually, I guess, it does it go all the way up? In no, here? it just, if you were to extend out Terrace Street, okay. you'd link it up to where it is. Across, you were, just right across. I, know, I guess it's governor. Does the state own the forest behind there, though? No. Well, that's, isn't that part of um, Hubbard Park? Uh, oh. for, a portion of it is, I think. But. Okay, all right. So we've got different, something different cross. I don't know why the Federal Register has a forest as part of its territory. Well, the only thing is the tower. Yeah, 
right, so I guess if we're looking at this from the standpoint of neighborhoods, particularly this one, red, red is our federal. Yeah, so this this neighborhood is cut in half um, by virtue of what's designed. And, and over here, too. I mean, basically, this whole is excluded. So it's basically uh, Franklin Street and then over across on uh, St. Paul. So. I mean, I guess, like, that's just kind of sort of a threshold question. Is like, what function does the National Register, like, what does it mean? What does it do? And, and, and well, it's the same question for the designated downtown. Like, functionally, what purpose does it serve? What benefits does it designate? The designated downtown, because of our um, status as a, what's it? For local government, whatever yeah. it is. Certified local, Certified local government. government and all the benefits that, that flow from that mean that we have to have design control for that designated downtown. So, okay. so, so, so yeah, we have no choice. But that's that's the minimum. That's we can't exclude any of that. And that's key to the designated downtown, not the national register. Right. The national register doesn't isn't really regulatory on us at all, as far as I understand. It just has to do with you know, how people have reported on surveys and how, you know, federally of what's considered historic parts. So it's it's based, I mean, it, is, it does seem based on some qualitative, right. you know, work. And identifies to, historic. To, to identify what's historic. Right, but there's no downside risk in any way, shape, or form for us to exclude a portion of exactly. the National Register. There is a downside risk to excluding a portion of the same downtown. Right. Yeah. And same thing in the, in the design control is what we currently are regulating, but we're not held to follow that either. Right. Uh, but if we deviate, I think we do need to be able to justify why we're suggesting something different. Deviate from? From what? From the status quo right now. Like, like basically that, that dark black line is like, that's the status quo right now, that's what's being regulated this way. So if we, if we change it, we just need to have, know what our reasons are. Well, I guess just for conversation starter, discussion starter, yeah. I mean, is there any reason we can't take out this parcel? And then is it, I don't understand why we have national light in there, I guess. I mean, there are some historic properties in here, but but they're not even in the historic register, so. No, they're not. Nope. District. Um, so we could reduce the design control district by of yeah. those properties, particularly National Life and the other property. And actually, we don't have, do we have jurisdiction over the high school? Because that's a civic. So we lose pretty much all of this area between the state and civic. So I mean, there's a, it seems like there's a lot of justification for taking that portion out. It's not prop, it, you know, if it's not historic properties. But does that then allow us to expand on the other end? Um, certainly in favor of getting rid of. I think this, it doesn't. It just makes no sense to me. Yeah. And unless I'm in this corner, maybe. I guess even, the, even that role. does the design do we have enough review in the zoning for the western gateway that would take care of any issues that might come up for this area out here
that we have control over? Because there are two state buildings and then there's the high school, which is civic. So, oh, oh we have No, it's, it's not, not it's not over here. Yeah, it's not over there at all. Yeah. Okay. Does it mean downtown really? It's not oh it is Barry Street. It goes quite a way down Barry Street, doesn't it? Yeah. Interesting. We have to include it. Half of Barry Street is under design control and one side and the other side is not. So with respect to the Western Gateway question, yeah. uh, figure 215 lists the uses that are permitted or conditional in the Western Gateway District, drive through facilities and drive-in establishments are prohibited except as specifically authorized by figure 215. And in figure two, oops. That's, that's the zoning, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just looking at whether Gate Western Gateway is protected enough without. Yeah, I'm looking for that. Seems like they're protecting undevelopable properties. Yeah, right. That's, that's like a cliff. Yes, that's not the highway, right? So I assume that it was extended there before because of the concern of the city. Um, well, is there a justification for removing that portion and extending it? Well, I think if we feel like the zoning takes care of the concern, we're going to get questions. I'll play devil's advocate. Um, not that I really feel this way, but, but so if I'm going to try to make a case for why I should stay in, is that, uh, sure, it's design review is not going to apply to most of it, which actually, I think, eliminates any concern we would have over regulation and what few parcels are included, though, since it's a gateway. Maybe we do want to make sure that, that whatever control we can have, we have the design review look at it. So what parcels are those? Like, is there some? There's a uh, Green Mountain Power. Is that? Power. Is that who owns that building? Yeah. Right here. Yeah. And then? Oh, it says so right there. And then what was this building? I think this is more state, maybe. That's the liquor. That's the liquor building at the end. Oh. Next to that is the old GMP building that the state now leases. I think all of it. Next to that is labor, and then next to that is the high school. So wait, you're saying the state's leasing this, but not own? I don't know if they own it, but I know they're occupying the building. I don't know under what arrangement. Oh. I think I st I've seen some GMP trucks, but I don't know if they're. Really yeah. operating out of there at all anymore? And they've got a demonstration silver so project there. Um, what are the permitted uses in Western Gateway? Uh, Well, I'm not doing much right now, so <laughs> at some point I'll get it. I just lost my spot. I wish I had the pool. So it sounded like earlier we were headed toward um, something like designated downtown plus the part of the current design control that also overlaps with the National, National Register. Well, I'm not in favor of enlarging it that much, but... Um. Yeah, so another way to put it would be, yeah, all the black that's not in the red would be removed. This has to stay in there because it's, it's 
it does. And it needs to grow a little bit. Yeah, I guess it does. I guess. I don't even know what's there. There's a little missing bit. Yeah. Oh, the other side of Barry Street. It went all the way down. Oh, that's the... In response to your question about permitted uses in the Western Gateway, yeah. those are lodging, retail sales and service, car wash and fueling station, uh, uh, various commercial development, um, industrial development, a smattering of public assembly, Mm. Permitted uses, institutional. So there are quite a few permitted uses. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's pretty expansive, but it's clearly, I mean, in the sort of preamble language, it says uh, uh, they encourage the ongoing use of this district for office, governmental, and civic uses, as well as development of a mixed use of new space of new uses to support a vibrant campus and village setting at National Life and an attractive gateway with uses that support the downtown. Protect significant views of the state house as one enters the city and enhance pedestrian connections between the district and the downtown. There's a bunch of conditional uses as well, but again, they're all more centered around sort of industrial and commercial development. But in terms of where the development could actually happen, it would have to be on National Life's Hill property. Yeah. Basically, yeah. this side, right? Yeah, this, this could theoretically be a club. club. Well, and I guess theoretically, the state could sell, right? Yeah. Those properties? And then, yeah. then it would change, yeah. though. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess, yeah, I mean, I don't know, this is more of a commercial district, so I'm not terribly... Maybe we could take out this, at least take out the residential Northfield Street portion, or that's not residential. Well, there are definitely historic buildings in there. Are they in yeah. Not according to the National Register. No, right on the register. Okay. <laughs> Just the waterman. I, sh I should also note, I don't know if this is going to impact our discussion at all, but the specific design review guidelines for the district, uh, the contemplate it being both the district and that there's a design control overlay to it as well in the zoning regs as written. 
that would have. To, I'm just saying we'd have to make that change to the zoning regs if we were to take it out. Right. Because they assume the design review overlay right now. Oh, you mean if we took it out? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think. How about that, housing? Um, is housing permitted in there? Uh. <sighs> probably. Uh, They are all conditional uses. Oh, everything. Okay. For for the Western Gateway. Okay, because that was certainly one of the things that was discussed on the um, bridges concept was developing housing up here um, on the National Life Campus or near it. So multifamily, we don't want to exclude that, but we also might want design review. The design review is not strictly for historic, as we talked about last time. Right. It's, it's the, yes, yeah, the non-historic part of the design review regs that it seems to me that it's appropriate to apply here because of potential commercial development. Yeah. We want to make sure that, because that could be, I mean, that could be development that if there's no design review, that could be something that the city really doesn't like. Do we have some sort of a survey that tells us how many properties are within any given district? Within a given zoning district, yeah. the parcel line should be on this, right? Right, but I just we like I'm just like a rock, just like a rock count. I didn't, I don't bring that, but yeah, we, we have, have it, it. Okay. Um, from previous version. Yeah. Are you just talking in general? Are you talking specifically about that? I was thinking about that one, but I mean, that's sort of a broader question, which is, it might be helpful to sort of understand how many properties we impact with within any given. District. So under the current parcels, it's like there's seven or eight that are in Western Gateway, but that could quickly change if National Life started subdividing. Yeah. Sure. All right, well, if we leave that one alone for right now, then what about, what about that part? Like this one that you put? Yeah. The, the college. Well, it does sort of pull in two little, three little awkward bits of neighboring zoning areas. So it kind of leaves out a really weird bit. That's the area. It does make it match better. Concept for having the parcel there because we see a historic building that I assume was the original. That sounds like that plus uh, this little weird leg looks like a death in a shot at Sabin's to have some say in what's done there. Oh. And that's this, that's the story this is telling me. Yeah. We <laughs> want we want to control VCFA and Sabin's more than other places. But Sabin, the rest of Sabin's is not. Yeah. Just that. Yeah. Piece. yeah. And just play devil's advocate if we um, the designated downtown is going to have to be included and we are regulating Barry Street up to this far. Both sides. These are no, just, one just one side is designated downtown. I thought both sides were designated downtown. Not Oh, yeah. I thought this was Barry. Oh, uh, well. Those are the more. Anyways, this starts yeah. to get us close to this neighborhood. So, I mean, if you. If, there was a desire to link those. It's there. I don't think we have to link them. I mean, if you want to keep yeah. it, just keep it. What did you think earlier? You said something about College Street. I just, I was just pointing out how, if you were just, I mean, come in out of the blue, visit Montpelier and visit various neighborhoods, College Street's one you would probably put in top lists of historic looking neighborhoods and yet it's yeah it's evaded regulation um, and, that's, and that's not me trying to make the case for like extending it to college street what I'm really saying is that like if you apply that logic to some of these others I mean yeah why is the area around Scribner Place and the middle school historic when college street isn't or you know, yeah 
Well, it's on Main Street. These are the, there's the Bisbee House and the, like, Wayne Houses or something. Yeah, the they're Wayne. In, yeah, yeah, that big one. Yeah. yeah. They were built, like, in 1805. Yeah, that. There's a one on the corner of J, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so that's, those are good. Yeah, and they're flanking Main Street. So Main Street as a as an artery that we're protecting on both sides with design review sort of makes sense. I think. Okay. Yeah. No, um, I think yeah, that seems to be the logic of having that. So that part makes sense, I guess the big Okay, so I guess the question is design review beyond this there's not much of it, but there's a little bit of design review beyond. Um, beyond, um, yeah, where's my street? Oh, oh, oh. So, two and three parcels pass north on the left. Oh, right, because the continuation of J is North Street. Yeah. So, um, oh, well, maybe it's not worth arguing about those two. Um, they are in a different zoning if we're trying to understand mm -hmm. that's true yeah, so yeah. more parcels that are or there's two parcels I can't tell if there's two parcels that are split or that's really confusing like those might be two each what's that it's I can't tell if this is one parcel and one parcel and then one and one or if that's one parcel that's split down the middle the oh, zoning no, shouldn't split a parcel. It's that it, except that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, except that one. Yeah, that is kind of curious. So it it was probably be. it's probably a parcel boundary then. Yeah, there. We, so it would be five parcels. Yeah. Bringing the ones. Yeah. To match the, the green. To match. Yeah, and then also matches the um, historic register. Oh, does it? Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. We're bringing that back. Okay. Um, but the bigger question is, what about all these neighborhoods that are within the historic and not within design? Oh, no, it wasn't matching uh, designated. It is not a little right there, right? 
Yeah. But over here is very visible if you're coming across the Granite Street Bridge. Uh, this side? Yeah, these. Yeah, yeah. These are designated downtown, but not design control. Well, that I think we have to change, right? right. So that's coming in. Yeah, I think we have to. I think we decided, we we decided that. Those are definitely coming in. But what about this side of the street? It's in the same zoning district. It's been zoned for Riverfront. Oh, I see what you're saying. Further up. And it is within the historic Not district, all halfway all to. Halfway. to uh, mm -hmm. I feel like what that street was called. Yeah, the downtown is here. Yeah. So we're saying already that we need to add this but again it's just this side of the street right just that side of the street and is that in the historic no no and it's all this too yeah yeah so so that it'll match the designation okay. Okay. yeah so then the outstanding question is yeah because the design review is Design review does take both sides of Berry Street here, but doesn't here. Is there another example where it only takes one side of the street? The yeah. current design review that right on St. Paul Street? Yep. Uh, in Spring yeah. Street, but. Uh, where are we? Street? Yeah. Oh, Spring, yeah. But that. Oh, yeah, that's right. On one part, the side of the St. Paul. And then it abruptly stops, so it's also only half the length of St. Paul. Yeah, I'm not seeing why those parcels on the other side of St. Paul even need to be included if we're not going all the way or anything. Wait, which ones? The like these. Um, church on the other side? Not on St. Paul. Um, oh, this is the church on St. Paul. Yeah. But it's not, but, yeah. But, so but it's, it's not good. included. But on the other side is, uh, looks like the funeral home is one of these. Oh, you're right. And you're then right there's a few residential back there, but yeah. I don't know and if on, they're not. And on this side are, are, are a few uh, residential historic that, are, <laughs> that are being used. Don't tell me what you're saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> on this side, you're on some, TV saying that. some buildings, <laughs> uh, that are being used for non-residential purposes. Um, on St. Paul? On St. Paul, yeah. Just a, a few buildings off of on the east side. Yeah. Uh, so if you follow the downtown line there, it would knock out like you could follow the zoning line there, which is close to the so St. Paul up St. Paul you'd have one, two, three, four properties that were mixed use. And then you could jet in. I think there's a compelling argument to make up our entire suggestion based on zoning uh, neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And and basically like include the three in one here. And that leaves out yeah. the kind of iffy stuff we're talking about. But so urban core, all three urban cores, obviously, and then this, and then the three one up here. Um, but not taking. I don't think we want to take that piece out, just because it's uh, it's mixed. That's mixed, right? Yeah. Because um, within that section on School Street is the Social Security building. And yeah, well, it's already in the, yeah, doesn't It's in the designated downtown. Oh, all right. No, so, so, but yeah. not the entire zone. There's one Right, property. okay, so that's. It should probably get treated the just, same as everybody else. Just that one property here. Right. Uh, there's a, yeah. Yeah. And the green one next to it is also not. Basically, what we did with 
this is that we're just taking it on Bear Street, but I don't know why the zoning district didn't take it on Bear Street. It didn't. It broke it here. Great. So if you just took that green one out, oh, okay. left the one orange property that's not in the downtown, but is this Which one is seven six or seven three? Mm -hmm. So this, we have seven three and seven six. It's the same colors. Because they're all seven. It's just that it's, they have different I guess needs. That's the dividing line. Um. Yeah. The like white, the the white line. Yeah, that's what it seems like. I'm just I'm bringing that up to point out if we wanted to divide it by neighborhood. To, oh right, so my like neighborhood. part of seven six is part of each of those is in the designated downtown, right? So if we did it by neighborhood, we'd have to include all of both. Seven six and seven three. Yes. Seven six. Yeah. Let go. What's this? That's also that's seven. seven same thing. Oh. This white line right here oh, it's it probably for, goes. For what, oh. it, for what it's worth, that is in the. Oh, no, this is probably 7.3. This is all 7.3. I think it is all 7.3. 7.3. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And the National Historic Boundary is pretty similar to what that neighborhood boundary is, actually. Go ahead. Yeah. The historic boundary, yeah. but not the review. So that right. takes you right up to the area. If we extended design review to match the historic district, uh, uh, East State. I, I find it a little hard to justify having the section of savings in, by the way, when it doesn't fit with what seems like the rationale for the rest of the stuff around. But isn't that district that tracks with the property that's owned by the, the college? The college. Right now. That's the college's own parcel. Right. Um, I would, I don't know this, but I would assume the reason why that boundary was drawn the way that it was when it was is because there was recognition that there would be better chance of asserting jurisdiction of yeah. the review board over that parcel as opposed to the remainder of, um, you know, say this past year. I guess given what the, what city council is doing with that zoning change, that boundary change that we discussed at last meeting, I don't know that those zoning boundaries are even really that relevant to it. No. I think that change shows us that it's not going to be just one owner anymore, though. Fair enough. Oh, yeah, I that's, agree. That's one thing. Yeah. I mean, think but I, Potentially. But we, the property's not sold yet. Right. <laughs> but I think that, again, there's probably a recognition that that's probably more primed for development than the remainder of the past year, which... I think is probably tracking with the reality. So. so if we think of some of the criteria, one of which would be to have design review encompass both sides of a particular street, um, potentially, to um, follow neighborhood boundaries, in general. What about arteries? I mean, the justification for continuing it up East State up to the college is that that's, that's an important artery in the city. Do we, do we have a sense of how the neighborhood boundaries have been established? Yeah, that was when we, when we read the zoning, um, Mike uh, mostly did a detailed look at the entire city and kind of hand tailored those neighborhoods to to, to match like as a, as a cohesive neighborhood. If that makes sense. They were uh, similar density yeah. and property um, um, pro parcel sizes. Okay. So that the idea was to create a, a grouping of properties that had that fell within the designated lot size yeah. to make more of them okay. conforming. So Mike did all that work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. along with um, 
I mean, it's never been, but, there hasn't been any real grumbling about it, has it? Well, well that, there grumbling, was, that <laughs> grumbling happened, but then zone, the zoning is now the zoning. So. Right, yeah. right. And there, uh, there were changes, and there, okay. were, uh, there was an additional zone added. All right, so it's been vetted then. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's vetted and it's not arbitrary, so that's so we can it's, tell. It's, yeah, that's key. Yeah, that's key. Yeah. What was the additional zone that was added? Um, up off of uh, um, what is this? What oh, called? Uh, this is the list. Off of Town Hill. This. Uh, Oh, this change. This was changed to the seventeen thousand. Interesting. That's quite a couple of things. Twenty-four. I didn't think it was, but anyway. I think they've really got yeah, their I way. think they really did. Yeah, because it's actually yeah. bigger than I thought it was. Right. But that's the only area that's twenty-four thousand. Yeah, it was a compromise between seventeen and thirty. These folks out here really wanted to be a. So we're kind of ignoring that. Yeah. Should we slap one to that? Oh, God, I'm going to hear a scream. Um, well, maybe we need to consider what are the values of people of design review for the city as a whole. Why is it important to include certain areas? Uh, agreed. My understanding from hearing about the design review is that it's, well, when they came in and presented, it was, it's not like they can force you to do anything. It's just sort of a review. That one? They, well, with the, with the new proposed regulations, they kind of beefed up their enforcement ability a bit. That's one thing. Okay. Uh, a lot of things under the current version of it, yeah, there, it's it's a lot of it is uh, just suggestions because the current one's pretty vague. Which if it's vague, it means they can't enforce much. Uh, so on the one hand, it's going to be a little stricter now. Although there's also some built-in parts for administrative, you know, administrative approval to make certain things quick. So there's like both sides of that, like stricter but also easier in some ways. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think the way I see it is yeah we're about to we're about to make it a bit stricter. So with that, with that in mind, like where is it appropriate? It's not all about historic though, um, right. and I think that and I think the commercial type development. I think the city as a whole I think has more of an investment or more of an interest in when, when that happens. So that's why. I think it makes sense to keep the Western Gateway, both Gateway Mesa, I won't touch the Eastern right now, but in the urban core where there's more commercial stuff, keeping keeping that in design review makes sense to me because you're more, much more likely to get development that everyone has an interest in how it is and more, things are more likely to be focal points in the city. It just just so, just to yeah. dovetail with what Kirby just said, um, the draft design review standards that we've been doing, there's a specific section regarding the Western Gateway District, and it mm -hmm. requires things like the site development shall provide visual protection of gateways, minimum setbacks will be established, reach development parcel from the main roadways to retain natural terrain. Uh, they also want new development to uh, offer clustering of development on site to maximize the preservation of open areas. Um, so there's a specific, I mean, the, the Historic Preservation Committee has done some pretty detailed thought on specifically the Western Gateway person. They, they clearly assumed it would be within the boundary that we're considering. Yeah. And what was the other, there was another one too that's a special area besides the Western Gateway. Uh, Riverfront. Okay. So they assumed uh, Riverfront, which is not in the, its entirety. In. Yeah, good chunks of it are left out. I mean, if something's not in design review, it's not as if the city doesn't have any oversight over the design right. entirely. It's just certain features that are more, uh, it's more carefully considered in design review. It's just, just the regs, basically. Right. Yeah, but I mean, there are some, what I would consider design 
features. Right, so it's not like you can just build whatever you want. <laughs> no, the, so, but, so the zoning is what takes effect there. It's not design yeah, right. review aspects. So wait, the the design review committee doesn't have any jurisdiction outside of the overlay district, right? Right. The, right. The, okay, that's what I thought. Right. So yeah, Aaron is, is making the case that it's not like it's without protection if we don't right. include it. Yeah, I just wanted to. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, it's like very, right, like you're talking about the gateway. Sorry if I interrupted you. Yep. You know, sort of, to me, it's like protecting the most special visual areas of the city. Which is not necessarily doing on the eastern gateway, because you're talking about design and view. On the eastern gateway? Yeah. Oh, but I guess Along I, the riverfront, which is yeah. But I guess I don't think I think most people enter in. I guess the, in my mind, the western gateway is the main. Yeah. Gateway. But, but yeah. one most of our development potential is along the eastern gateway, riverfront. Um, is any, is anyone in favor of including all of the all of river, the riverfront district? Where is that? Design Can we go? It's big, it's yeah. here and out here. And all the way. Like, like, like all, all, all the way, all the way out, which would be, so that would be a big expansion if we included the entire thing. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, just want to do like a, like, a, like a straw poll thing real quick, like for sake of time, like no, we even want to consider that. The, does it, the downtown, the designated downtown district, that comes up no. a little more. Well, we just we beat it up a little it, bit. It comes, it comes to here. We've right. got to do this much of it. And where is that? Uh, at Granite Street, the bridge. And, and so on both sides of Berry Street. Uh -huh. um, um, oh, I see that. So, raise your hand if you would entertain the idea of including this. The board. I'm okay. always in favor of including it, but because we have a justification that's strong enough. It, because it's a gateway, and if we want to focus on visibility. Well, but, yeah. Um, okay. If we want to focus on areas that are likely to be developed, frankly, along the river. Well, okay. let's take the prime example in that area right now, the Bar Hill. Yeah. Right. And I mean, the, that, that was developed without any. It was. Design review committee. Was it right? Right? Yeah. And. I, and and also the um, uh, um, the log building, not log building, timber frame. Isn't timber frame right there? Oh, uh, the one that's out on. Oh, that's on the other side. That's right on Elm, yeah. Um, um, okay, so okay, so we'll set that aside for now. Who's uh, tends to favor keeping this island in the VCFA owned part? I would. About this bit up here, but if we were going to talk about river, maybe that's part of it. Okay. But, but I'm moving on, and it looks like only Barb was interested in that, so so okay. I think I'm thinking we're not going to include that. So now I'm asking, like, what about this? So I I do think that the that sort of the main like sort of the traditional like college quad area, it's like a pretty significant. You know, it's kind of a it's sort of the east side anchor of town. I feel like. Um, you know, that quad's pretty important. Obviously, the main building's pretty important. And there are a number of pretty big residential structures, like right around, they sort of bring it, I feel like, are pretty significant. That I, I mean, just personally, I can see why you would want design review authority to ensure that that's preserved in a certain way. But sort of the funny thing, though, is that, you know, it, it kind of, that area sort of bleeds a little bit into the College Street area, and if that's not included in design review, it's sort of a tough sell at that point. But and I, aren't we limited in the College District? Yeah, I can, that's why I, I, that's not the other I thing I was going to wonder. Was really, I think that the kind of the main building is sort of out. Right? Well, those are all basically what's included. There are all almost all college-owned buildings, not quite. Oh, but if they let the state's right. little colleges are doing something, 
<laughs> and goodness, VCFA is, seems to be doing pretty well. But, um, so I just don't know what we have, what we can actually say about that. Yeah. We can keep it in design review. But why wouldn't we be able to tell the college, like, what the college would have to go through design review, would it not? No. Why not? I vaguely remember Mike saying something about that as well, that that was sort of the main. There's limitations. There might have been an exemption, exemption. for the college yeah. itself. I remember that too. Yeah. I don't know to the extent of what that exemption is, but that's what I remember now that I think about it. If they're exempt, then yeah, but we should, why, why even include it then? Yeah, because if, if they weren't exempt, then isn't that new, the new it, uh, visiting? <sighs> Somewhere. I would have been surprised if it went through this one with you. Oh, yeah, that one that like, doesn't match the rest of the it, Yeah, it's not even the little compatible. Yeah. Oh, the, the cafe or whatever. The, it's, yeah, it's actually it's it's highest in. across from. I mean, it's oh, like glass, like the glass. Yeah, it's, it's got to be in the there. It's the best part of campus. Yeah. <laughs> what did you call it? This is the best part of campus. Uh, the glass. Very modern. Uh, if you like to be on. Discussion. So keep it? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, I, I think there's sort of a, I mean, you're thinking for really going to talk about what we do and don't want to do is, I mean, we sort of have a certain amount of, like, institutional buy-in with the status quo, for lack of a better term. I mean, if it's already there, yeah, you know, absent some significant reason to and not, change it. And not change, not change it? Or... I mean, we could, but I, the question is why? Right? We, why? We already have, I mean, the design review authority exists already. It's, For that person. It's, it's the, one, the why from a policy perspective would be, okay, we're identifying that as a, as a landmark, visible piece. But that's, that, that reason does not, that policy reason does not apply to this land back here. Except that debates already happened when this boundary was set before. And the outcome of that debate was, was that it was going to be part of design and view authority. I wonder if these people want design review here. I'm sure they do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're assuming that design review is de facto positive in all cases. No, I I'm not. No, I certainly. No, I, I want to make that very clear. I'm not making that argument. My, what I'm saying is, is that we have a set of boundaries that has already been vetted, has already gone through a certain process. So to me, that becomes a pretty compelling baseline for what we should use as boundaries. And if there are going, if we're going to make any changes to these boundaries, there ought to be some very clear reason for why we would do that. This is the counter. That is, this is this like what we're going through is the chance to totally shake it up. And I agree. And I, I think it's fine to have the debate as whether or not to keep it. Mm -hmm. The question is, is why? Right. Okay. It does impact Saban Street, so I think you know the. Um, so that does the idea of keeping it in design review. Um, it helps to protect Saban Street. So no matter who owns that property, whether it's this, I mean, I'm sure it was drawn that way because that's the college-owned property. But um, even if someone else owned it, it would still be. A reason to keep it would be to protect Saving Street. Whereas these wouldn't need to be included because once this is mixed in, right, not right. residential. That's far enough away. There's, you know, not other residential properties abutting. Uh, for, yeah. for me, it's the potential for it to have commercial development, similar to over here, would be maybe a reason to have it. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but, to, but to favor some residences that don't have to subject themselves to regulation yeah. so that they're benefiting from an externality of their neighboring? Well, like, I don't like that idea. Yeah, if it's because it could be red commercial development, it, that's why. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. if, if there were going to be more residences, no, but because it's potentially developable for commercial and has it. Is commercial the red? I mean, no, this is river front, so that's definitely yeah, it's commercial. Like yeah, yeah. This, and this is called college pasture right. which is yeah is a, it's a neighborhood designation yeah. um, 
I mean, to me, if BCFA is selling that parcel, it's, it's currently for sale. It's a big argument to at least cut that piece out. Right? Because isn't this the parcel that they're selling, basically? Mm -hmm. Not up that far. Oh, okay. Just yeah. in, I think, alignment with that uh, neighborhood change. They told us they were buying a parcel that was zoned in three places. Oh. They're not proposing development for the top zone. Right, that's right. But they are for for those two and on the so here's here's something here's something to think about when you're talking about like how, where these boundaries are set and why some things are included and some aren't. So under the proposed site specific standards for alterations and additions to historic buildings, historic buildings are defined as any buildings listed or determined eligible for the state register or national register of historic places or deemed locally significant by the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, yeah. They are they those are subject to a long list of requirements. However, non-historic buildings um, shall respect and be compatible with existing patterns and setbacks found around adjacent buildings. Then there's also the new design building standards. So the question really becomes: is if those if those properties next to on Saban Street are not part are not defined as historic buildings, there's not much that uh, having. Uh, design control district laid on top of it would, would change anything. But that's, that's true for Elm Street and downtown all, and everywhere too. Mm -hmm. Right, which I think is something that we ought to think about when we look at these. Yeah. But, that's the, the, but I think what the, the college property sort of represents is a new building, an opportunity for new buildings which would subject those mm -hmm. to the new building standards. So I, I think we just need to think about like if there's existing buildings, it, the, it really comes down to historic versus non-historic designation. It's in terms of what really is applied to those when they're doing alterations or changes. But if it's in the design review, review district and it's new construction, all these requirements apply. Joe, you know, it just has to be compatible if it's new construction but not within the historic district then it does not have to obviously have historic aspects to it, but it has to be a compatible development, which if that parcel, if the college sells that parcel. No, it just says, it says new building standards. This section applies to the development of new buildings within the design review overlay district. Yeah. It, makes, it doesn't make any reference to, his, to a historic district. Okay, so. But the historic then overlays that, and in the historic, new buildings in the historic district have more re requirements than new buildings in the design review, but not historic district, um, which is where we're talking about. Right? The end there. We're, right. we're talking about design review and as we're both in the same district. Right, but the parcel we're talking about right now is, is not in the historic and is not in, is currently in design review but not in the historic district and is available for commercial development, particularly right. in the riverfront right. district. I, I think, I thought that this, the being, it means being in design control means that it's, it's also in control for historic. No, this is no. historic rent. This is, well, this is the national, but it's not regulatory for oh, us. I think know that our, our historic preservation rents. No, we just have, it, that's what, what Aaron was saying, is yeah. that there are two, two sort of districts so his, requirements so as, de, as defined in these proposed regs. And the proposed regs have them, yeah, being the same. No, there, there are, set, there are some, it is for design, the design review district, part of the design review district is historic, part of the design review district is not historic. My understanding is those regs imagine the same district, but the historic applies if your particular building property is deemed historic. That's correct. It, within the National Register yes. District. Right, so that parcel is not within the National Register District. Right. It's it's, not, I think it's deemed historic just as by the survey where we're contributing, non-contributing 
Yeah, but those are only the ones that are contained within the red. That's those this. are the ones. Yeah. This one? Yeah. So all of those, his contributing or non-contributing, have been evaluated within the red. Only within the red. Yeah. Yeah. So Unless Montpelier did some evaluating outside the red. Right. Or if it's deemed locally significant by the Historic Preservation Committee through testimony okay. at a design review committee or development review board hearing. That would be hard <laughs> to expand it. You know? That's a good, okay. Well, that's, I, I thought that maybe some of these properties, even outside of the red, had at least been surveyed mm, for contributing. I don't about. think so, no. Okay, well, that's good information to have. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to it and move us along. Um, okay, so if who's in favor of keeping the, I'm gonna say the VCFA island as it is in what we start with? Within the historic district. Within, I mean, it was, with, sorry, within, within, design, within design, design review. review. So raise your hand if you would, if you're in favor of including that. Keeping it. Exactly as it is. Exactly. Yeah. As a okay. starting point. Raise your hand if you're in favor of including it, but cutting out the savings portion of it okay okay we have a two two split um, well maybe I guess I'd rather go on a property line I, I feel like that's the property or I guess never mind we wanted to go on zoning but never mind I see yeah, this would go on zoning um, well we have a two two split there so I don't know what we're gonna do because we don't have we're not gonna have a majority on that one so I aspect either. I just asked the simple question is like why again? I'm sorry, I, maybe I missed it. I was looking at the other stuff. Why, why do we want to cut that out? Why do you guys want to cut that out? My thought was if we need to expand elsewhere, then we can cut out some parts that we don't need. That would be good. Why would it's we? It's a trade off then. Yeah, a little bit of a trade off, maybe. Well, maybe. Do you want a table and move on? Yeah, maybe if we talk about where we might want to expand it, and then we could value, we could weigh those two with each other to decide. So the next the next piece is the part of Main Street around the middle school that goes beyond the designated downtown, so something we could remove. Who's in favor of keeping that as it is? Wait, that part is in both, right there. That part is in both. Yes, though. Yeah. It, okay. We'll, for, we'll start, okay. So. There's the piece that falls outside of the National Register, which we can also take a look at. But just in general, who's in favor of keeping that? as an extension. The part in the yellow. Is this the little isthmus yeah. on Main Street? Yes, the Main Street around the middle or not school. isthmus, a peninsula, I guess. That's yeah, not it's an isthmus. Like a, it's, it's not, not an isthmus. It's not yeah. in downtown, but it has, Barb mentioned earlier how it's an artery or a, you know. Yeah, when yeah, you're that was when you're, come, when you're coming down the hill there, that's but in a way, it's like a gateway in a way. Talking, you're only talking about this piece, these properties right here. Right, because it's already now in the historic district and it's in design review up until that point. Right. So okay. if we take this part out. Okay, well who's in favor of taking that part out? Let's start small. Are you just no, cleaving no. the yellow part? The, the yellow part. Yeah, the, the, couple of, the couple of parcels so that are, that are yes. consistent mm -hmm. with neighborhood boundaries. It's not yes. consistent with neighborhood boundaries, it's also not consistent with the national register. Yes. Okay, so okay, so, we have the, so we're definitely not gonna include that. Who's in favor though of, of the rest of it staying in? Raise your hand if you want the rest of this to stay in. Okay, so we have three on that one. <laughs> you have a, a persuasive. Yes, it's right. Um, Offer opinion. Okay, so we have that. And then I don't think that it's, it matters one way or another about the no, state house. But um, what does count is Cliff Street. And then, so Cliff Street's not in the designated downtown. It is not in the design control any longer. It's not in design but control But it is in the historic district. Right. So that was the one that was removed by the city council um, because of citizen complaints about being in design review. Just a majority of the citizens that were impacted by this came out and spoke out against being included in design review. And they, they, had, they had some bad experiences within their neighborhood. Right. Which and is hopefully what we have ameliorated now um, for the future. And that is in the historic yes. district. But it's not in historic, the, but it's not currently not in downtown. design control. It's not currently it's in not, design control. So who would be in favor of including that back in from our, for our starting point? Barb's in favor? I'm kind of tempted, but I guess. <laughs> 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 you can see that portion of the 
city from you know, like the Justice Kennedy of our group. Here. <laughs> it's visible, though. It is visible, right? It's they claim visible. it's not visible, no, but it, it is. is visible. And just because they're 1920s buildings does not make them non-historic, which was their other argument, is that they didn't understand why they were part of the historic district because they didn't think they were historic. Okay. So we had two that raised their hand about including that. Anybody going to join them? And they're contributing to I'm going, to I'm going to abstain. I'm going to say my vote. I'll go with a, a, a majority of three in any case, okay? Um, okay, so we're, it looks like we're not going to include that. Oh, so you're not going to form the three. You're going to go if we have three. If you have yeah. three, I'll join you as your fourth. Uh, okay. That you need for a, you know, for majority. All right. Um, we don't have three for that. Um, I think that's it, right? We 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 did agree earlier. Northfield Street. Yeah. <coughs> Where? The yellow and the um, the red part. Yeah. So Northfield part. Street. The part. Yeah. Or at least maybe just the yellow part. I guess if we want to keep that in, although those are probably the least. Well, maybe those are the least. I don't if know. If we're going to keep where. those in there, why not keep that street as well? I guess it was only if we were going to remove it. Jump up North Hill Street. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm in favor of taking out that whole chunk. Including National Life. And well, I, I guess I'm okay, okay with keeping the, that pink part in. Um, and I could, you know. Well, so now that I have a better sense of what the proposed regulations are relative to the historic district and how that impacts existing buildings versus new construction. Um, I am in favor of keeping it as is. Which one? Northfield? You were talking about... I was thinking about the whole western gateway. Oh, okay. Northfield is hidden from the gateway. Mm -hmm. It is not part of the historic district. Okay. So it is it is not part of the historic, so it's only part of review. Yep. So I'm still in favor of keeping yeah. it. <laughs> I mean, only if we could take an equivalent area, land area, but um, it would impact a lot more people. I mean, I think the thing that we've got to think about is, is outside the historic district, or if it's outside the historic district as defined by the National Registry or whatever metric we want to use for that, like, mm -hmm. really design review speaks to new, new, new construction only. So I... You know, a corridor like Northfield Street, I feel like design review is appropriate. Well, I don't for understand what you're saying about speaks to. So you're saying if it's not identified, and maybe if this is the thing, sorry, that we've already gone over and I didn't understand. Yeah. I thought they could, if your house is at least 50 years old, they can impose, they can, it has to be a contributing structure in order not to reread the. No, because it's not part of the district. The district is this map here. All of the ones that are not darkened in are um, identified and listed buildings. So there's a list. Yeah. So only the listed buildings are what define the... But like, for instance, I mean, Kirby was talking about his wife applying for a fence permit, and you don't have a contributing structure in the historic district, correct? Right, so the, so the historic part of the regs did not apply to us, I suppose. But the design review part did. Yeah, so it's we not just, you. I mean, you said it only Old applies street. to new development. That's why it confused me. I under, still have under, under the new, under the, the under the proposed oh, changes board. to the design review regs. I think. So under the proposed. No, we might be Kirby just in, to We might be just in so you are If he's in the historic so district, yep. yes, and he will. And you're part of the historic district. Yes. But our house isn't contributing. Oh, it's a non-contributing structure, but it's still part of historic. Okay. Because we have some fancy little things on the outside of our house that they didn't like as historic. Oh. It's too much decoration, but we're not historic. It was added, not consistent with the And they didn't like house. our garage. Um. Yeah. So, help me out, Kirby. I don't understand the contributing versus non-contributing analysis. Like, it was, um, I, I believe it was this, the city's historic preservation committee at one point now. You think it's... <laughs> I mean, contributing versus not. I don't know what entity. I don't know what entity decides who's contributing to me. I'm not remembering it's, that right now. I, I think that's part when the National Register District is established. 
they in, um, list all of the buildings, and the buildings in their listing say contributor or non contributor. But, but who decides those listings? Do you recall? I think someone locally, it's, I'm pretty sure it's not well, national. It's, they get the input from the state, this national uh, historic um, preservation, mm -hmm. whatever it is, department. But it's the National Register listing that actually places them. So if you went on to the National Register listing right. for you, Mount Pelier, you'd find your house. Right. You can you can go online and find a list of yeah. the houses within this, right. and, and, and it tells you contributing or not. But but it's a detailed write-up Yeah. based on someone with some expertise. But what is the impact of contributing versus not contributing? If you're not contributing, you're not regulated as much. Does yeah. that mean you're not an historic? No, you're still historic. Okay. So, but if you want, but if I wanted to turn my house into a commercial property and try to get some grants based on historic preservation, I would need to get my house contributing before I could qualify for those. Okay. That's a good point. Okay. So it is purely a subset within the historic register. In terms it, of contributing. But a majority yeah. of it doesn't. The majority are contributing within the city. Just don't throw that out. Right, but it doesn't speak to any sort of local zoning or local regulation? I don't think so. It, well, so contributing well. or not determines whether or not our historic preservation ordinance will, will apply to your house if you're within the design review boundary. But you will still have design review regardless. You'll have design review regardless, but whether or not the historic preservation parts of it apply to you. Okay. They'll be more lenient if you're a non-contributing structure. Okay. With the historic aspects. Because they're yeah, because if they're saying you're non-contributing, then you don't have historic fabric to replace with like material. We had a fence put in. I don't know if they would have decided a fence isn't historic. I don't know if that. I don't know. They didn't have fences in the past. Yeah. <laughs> no, generally it just. Has we used to be a barn, so yeah. our house. Uh, oh, interesting. So yeah. maybe it was fenced then too. Uh, um, <clears throat> all right. So we decided to not reestablish Cliff Street. No, so far what I have is basically we're looking at using the concern, the best way to put it, most succinct way to put it is current design review boundary minus the part of the 9-4 neighborhood that's included and potentially, and that's that's it right now. Exit out? I mean, are we we're sure. agreed on that, right? Sure. So and then, out. And then we were just now discussing whether or not the 7-4... Did we, we added this in? Yeah, yeah. we should yeah. definitely add that in. You're right. Great. So, so that's, that's the plus. The plus would be okay, any part of the current plus. design review that's this not uh, overlapping minus. with design, designated downtown. Okay. So current design review plus designated downtown. Minus the 9-4 neighborhood. Main Street East. Wait, where's it? Oh, yeah. Is that an Oh, yeah. That's all we got so far. Street was to leave it as is. To leave it out. So we, it was 2 2, I believe. Okay. Uh, All right. Um, oh, we also had this little nub here to remove the, that one property that's part of 9 6? 8 3. 8 3. <laughs> <laughs> what is that number? Um, Yes, it is 83. Um, to take that piece out because it's part of, of, of 83. Is everyone in favor of that? Yes. Unless, uh, does unless anyone know what that property is? I know, I was curious what it is. It's, <laughs> that, um, it's that multi family brick building um, that may have been a historic building. Um, what street? It's on, oh. it's on St. Paul. Um, and Baird, the corner of St. Paul and Baird Street. Um, it is 
it is a multi-family brick building. It's one of the very few, and I, it has some historic um, history to it, like it was a, a, a hospital. I don't know what it was, actually. I think I know which one you're talking about. But if we're trying to... Yeah, if that's the one, I know, I know what you're talking about. Sure. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your input. Yes, thank you. That was helpful. Uh, um, okay, but that's still... I assume this one jog is on the property line. Yeah. Is that the middle school? Before North, yeah. It's, it's like the, the whole thing's the middle school parcel. Okay. It's like the playground in the middle school back there. Yeah, okay. So this is just taking property on the street. Oh, I didn't realize the property went all the way out to Cross Street. Oh, Interesting. So I think that if you're gonna, if you're going to argue that to keep this in, I think it's because it would be mixed use, right? It is currently mixed use. So it's There's mixed use. So again, you could have like a gas station or something like that go in here potentially. I don't know exactly. Well, we already have the hotel, motel. The motel that's the Econo Lodge. The Econo Lodge is there. That's shut down right now, right? Or not? No, the lodge is construction at the moment. The lodge is open though, isn't it? I think it's yes. open. Yeah, it's under they, construction. they did the demolition of they did the, the Brown uh, Derby thing. The failed building. <laughs> yeah. So you could have other things like that go right. up around there, and so right. I think that because is a reason. Now there's for a big parking view. lot there that could be developed for some other reason. So, yeah, I think that should stay in. Too. What is what is this? Um, this is a hill, and there's a little neighborhood up there. Oh, oh it's steep the, up the hill, and there's a little house. Oh, is that where the um, few houses housing are authority there. properties maybe? Is that where like Freedom yeah, Drive and all that stuff? Is? It's multi-family. I think so. Rentals, yeah. Yeah, I think you're I, right. I think it would make sense, like, we'll, like we don't those other things to to yeah. make make this contour with the neighborhoods. Yeah, so draw yeah. this all the way up to Derby. Yeah, and cut out this green. Yeah. Okay. Why is this a piece? I know. Yeah, and then there's That's the green, weird. and then this. Two I think yellow. that those don't those properties. That's what we've been told. Yeah. I haven't okay. found an example that yeah, you're right. is contrary. So maybe what we're saying is, why is that use included? Because um, you couldn't you couldn't access it off of Northfield Street because all of these other residential properties are there. So maybe the part. No, we'd see the lines if the parcel went all the way back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking too. So we could say adjust it to conform with 7-4, with the just um, neighborhood 7-4. Mm -hmm. Yes. No? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Agreed. And, and including this yellow bit where it gets weird. Right here. What is that? It kind of weirdly cuts. Maybe the line is just sloppy there. Like it cuts weirdly yeah. right here. It doesn't come across. Uh, it doesn't come up school. Right. 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 That's it's like a strange. It's a strange. Maybe it meant to go that way. It's just a yeah. mistake. And, but I don't know what that is. Why maybe that blurb is following there. a hill or something. Yeah, but again, it's not following the property line. Yeah. So with. <laughs> Okay, Without so further reference, um, minus the small piece of what? What is that? Minus of uh, nine dash six, and then okay. oh, this is the neighborhood up the hill, right? This is high. Cross that street. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's very high. Yeah, it overlooks Berlin Street for sure. 
All right, and so then we said that it would conform with 7-4, including adding up to Derby. I guess unless I don't know why it was to, you know done that way. Yeah, I mean, make one know. He can always um, advise us, um, <laughs> especially for that green property that maybe. Yeah. All right, so. Okay. So we've cleaned up yep. to some extent this yep. part. Yep. And cleaned up that part. And so a couple of things. We we had tabled savings uh, VCFA earlier, and we all should also decide whether or not we want to vote tonight, or whether we want to just take this and have Mike vet it before we vote to see if he could explain any of the well is so. is this as much as we want to do so we just um, I mean yeah if John and Stephanie are at the next meeting we can potentially vote that parcel again right oh the so, college parcel yeah. and we yeah. also see if they had I feel like if we put the whole discussion off to the next meeting then we're going to be talking about this the whole next meeting well, we might need to just to be able to have our justification. This, this, will, this won't be our, but remember though, that like we're just going to put this out there and then get public comment and then we could change it down the road. I mean, yeah. So that's why I'm a little oh, bit eager okay. to get the ball rolling. I mean, uh, can we agree now that we sort of have a good sense of what we're dealing with, we can kind of mull this over for the next two weeks, have a pretty focused, quick conversation about this, hopefully not have it go more than I think that flag's about to go over. <laughs> so it's, I just noticed that in the corner of my eyes. It was, um, you know, I think we can do it in 20 minutes or less. Ideally, I think we could probably get okay. We can all just weigh in on what we want to do. Okay. Um, oh, do you want to wait to vote for the next meeting, or do you want to vote now and then just give a... What, are we, what exactly are we voting on? This is what we should We, we could vote on the entire thing, and then sort of at the beginning of this one, still let Mike know, let the other members know what we did. We could re-vote if Mike's like, no, you can't take that parcel out. It's special. Um, I, I don't know. I think you, you want to wait to vote? Yeah, I think at the next meeting we okay. could just say we're only going to talk about this for 20 minutes. Here's the, you know. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> Kirby will be hiring. Um, oh, good catch. Yeah. This is a lot of weird. I think that might be, is that, what's his name? What's that street that, it, Mountain View? Abby? I think that, yeah, he's all dead ended. It's just, it, you know, this existed before the zoning, so. That's true. That's true. So it could be, it could be arbitrary. Um, and, I mean, I think we need to think about whether or not we want to bite the bullet and include more of the area, down, the neighborhoods downtown that are within historic, country, but not within design. Okay. Well, let's talk about that right now. I mean, what do you do? You have a proposal? Well, I just think, oh, for one thing, the St. Paul Street part is really um, kind of bizarre. Um, that it's one side and not the other of this first section. Um, and actually, maybe the other side of the buildings that we would want to be more concerned about, including the church. Um, and, yeah, on the corner, I think. Uh, I don't know, I guess, but then if we extend it, if we take our rationale and extend it to all of, of uh, 9 or 8-3, 
then that we're splitting Loomis. Right? Splitting Loomis, and I can see that being a problem. Uh, like, pub, but as far as the public's view on that. Oh, Loomis there, right, okay, not up. Yeah. And if you decide to do both sides of Loomis, then you're talking about going really far in the Well, you're talking about confirming, you know, basically, uh, allowing yep. the review to match the historic. The yep. reason the first three, four properties on St. Paul is on the one side is because that's the designated downtown. We, oh, that's why it's there. Okay. And it just it leaves out everything else. And Interesting. Yeah. And if we, and then we said include the fourth property because it's the same zone as everything else. But it, it's technically not in the, and then if we got rid of this little green guy, that would limit that street to designated downtown and in the same zone. Yeah. There's also a bit of the designated downtown that's left out right here. That we'll Just on Miles Court, it's like two properties. In oh, the yeah. Orange. Just extending Cedar Street, right? So it's not the first one, it's the second one, so it would be only that one? Those two properties. Not even the little triangle property. For some reason. Good catch. See that? See the yeah, little right. triangle is up there, but those two are. Okay. All right, we'll believe them. There's also part of our urban center, too, that's excluded right now. This is a plus. Blue right here is urban center too, isn't it? Sorry, where? This this patch is it's urban center, yet it's not going to be under design review. Well, it's a it's a mountain. Oh, it's, oh yeah, yeah, it's that one. Funky. Yeah, it's pretty un undevelopable. Oh, it's quite a the little oh, playground in the back of rock. Basically. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in fact, that was this is a little part of this the, is a one way, it's so narrow right there. Yeah, and then part of the problem with that water main though, I think, I don't know, I heard something, maybe that came down, maybe that's, that wasn't it. I think it's like, okay, wall, so we should start wrapping it up. I mean, do we have any other things to include right now? So we could just consider whether or not we think there's a rationale for including anything else. We can, but so if we want to keep it quick next time, then on the agenda, um, we'll have an item to something like review of the proposal so far plus a discussion of the VCFA parcel and like lim limited to that. That's what I'm thinking right now, unless. Okay, I won't be here soon. Okay. You won't have to worry about me bringing up more, <laughs> more districts, more areas, more neighborhoods. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure you, if you want to make your case for any of these. Well, what about this side of Ferry Street in the riverfront? Yeah, I mean, I again, I sort of think, but it it only half extends half or historic and half or not. Half or historic, half or not. <laughs> I would be in favor of that. But. <laughs> Barry Street's a pretty major street. Yeah, especially if there's more development out here. True. If we're developing out this way, that's the street to get there. And there's discussion about the bike path development. Oh, is that going to go? That's <coughs> down that here far. on Stonecutter. <coughs> No, it's going to actually jump up to Berry Street. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think. I think, yeah, once you get farther down, it's on Berry, too. Oh, right. Past Jump Cutter, the new section is going to be along there. Anyway, I don't know that that makes a difference, but I think overall to have a consistent re design review. I would be in favor of that. You're saying all of this riverfront neighborhood for me. What? 
Sibley down toward downtown of the riverfront district. Is that part of the designated downtown? Uh, it's, no. it's, it's not part of the designated downtown. It's a the, the designated downtown splits the street there. So the one side of Barry's in, one side of Barry's out. So it's across from the designated downtown. Yep. I mean, I get that this part you see from the water, these houses back up to the See all those, but this is the one way street. This is not really through. This street is right, so that becomes more of the artery. Either of you interested, not interested, not interested. Okay, all right, we'll leave it at that then. Two of us interested, (laughs) yeah. Is that a question area then for next time or not? There's two of you, oh, yes, yeah, same as. Yeah. Just controversy. Do you, um, Marcella, do you want me to bring it up next time? Okay. We will put down the gym. Okay. There goes our 20 minutes. What? <laughs> That's going to be 60 minutes. Tonight was supposed to be an hour, so. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else on the agenda? No. Yeah, no. Uh, because of our change to do the minutes earlier. Right? Uh, okay, so with that, we have a motion to adjourn. Moved by Aaron. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Barb. Uh, and we are adjourned.